get more reaction to the Mass Casualty Commission report and what it says about gender-based violence and the safety of women. Erin Breen is a lawyer who represented several women's advocacy groups at the Commission. She's also in Truro, Nova Scotia today. Ms. Breen, good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Now, much of the report, and in fact, more than half of today's recommendations deal with policing, the RCMP specifically. So I want to start with your reaction to what the Commission says about the RCMP and gender-based violence, which was your focus in going before the Commission last year. Uh, yes, um, so our coalition was very much focused on the gender-based violence uh, mandate of the Commission. And upon first glance, I haven't had much time to review the report as a whole. It's, it's a very large report, seven volumes. But I did scan through, in particular, the, um, the, the volume on violence where, where our contribution was focused. We are pleased, certainly, with the fact that uh, our submissions before the Commission appear to have been uh, received, taken seriously, and adopted into the report. Uh, so what we really pushed for is a move away from the carceral system as the default response to gender-based violence, because it is clear, and all of the experts certainly testified it's clear, it is not solving the problem. In fact, things are getting worse. We need a completely different approach. And that approach involves uh, looking to the community and community-based organizations, um, corrections and police as being the center of the response. They continue to be a layer, not the default response. So uh, I haven't had an opportunity to view in detail the chat, the, uh, the policing volume, but certainly uh, what, what I did see is that the commission recognized uh, that, uh, you know, gender-based violence was not uh, addressed anywhere adequately at any point in time by the RCMP over the course uh, of the life uh, of the perpetrator in this case, and that on numerous occasions, um, you know, people, community members were aware of this, the police became aware of his violence, uh, and he got a pass. So things desperately need to change. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to diving into that, uh, that policing volume as well. Right. And, and so let's talk about some of the other recommendations then that, that deal with gender violence, intimate partner violence and family violence. Uh, you've talked about the police, but there's also uh, the root causes of that violence and how that can be countered. Uh, what are some of the key items that you've seen in this report that you're looking at, that you're looking for governments to act on? Well, I think that the key uh, issue here is the commissioners have equated the social determinants of health with social determinants of community safety. Uh, so they've recognized uh, that when people are living in poverty, when people are living uh, without adequate resources, in particular people who are in rural areas and some of that, um, you know, this puts them at an increased risk uh, for experiencing gender-based violence. Uh, so it's a, it's what the commission is urging is a public health response to what is an epidemic. And it has to be a full societal shift and with everyone on board. And, and you will see that this is not just directed as, at police or the justice system or corrections. This is directed at every office in Canada. It's directed uh, in every workplace, uh, in our school system, a full uh, recommendation for early education, starting in kindergarten, going to grade 12, in how we as community members can uh, react, can uh, effectively uh, conduct bystander intervention, all of these issues that clearly uh, were a problem in this particular case. I want to ask you as well about the shooter's common law spouse. The report does talk about Lisa Banfield saying she was not treated properly as a victim. Tell me why that is so important. Well, it, it's so important because she was the first uh, victim in the mass casualty. However, uh, she was criminalized. She was charged criminally by the RCMP, uh, and, you know, uh, she 
initially uh, was interviewed and asked to provide information to help police, believing that, you know, she was assisting, that she was trying to assist everyone who had been harmed by him by giving the information that she had. Suddenly, the tables turned on her. Uh, RCMP ends up charging her. And from her own testimony, she said initially she received great support in the community. However, once she was charged criminally, she became a target of public scorn and hatred. So I think the commission recognized this at an early stage, that she was demonized uh, and that we as a society have got to do better. We've got to educate ourselves and this victim blaming that goes on cannot continue. All right, we will have to leave it there. Obviously, a lot to process in today's report, not just what happened three years ago and before that, but also what's going to happen in the future. Aaron Breen, thank you for your insight. Thank you so much.